everybody, and welcome to your indie snapshot for today. Today we're taking a look at something really, really unique and something I have a hard time classifying as a game, so much as the general term of def uh, the general definition of game goes, because there's no real objective, there's no real thing to accomplish. It's more along the lines of something like Anna, where you're kind of just being led around, you get to, sh to look around, and the game's called Proteus, and it's won a lot of awards over the past while, and actually just released on Steam, and it's, of course, launch price of $8.99, it'll be normally $10, and the, the real question is, what is Proteus? Well, Proteus is a game about music, exploration, imagination. You are kind of dropped in this generated world where the music is phenomenal and the crisp, clean, though pixelated graphics kind of welcome you to the home, and you are just invited to explore where the world interacts with you. But the difficulty, as I said, it is very difficult for me to classify this as a game, and even the $10 price might seem a little steep. It's, um, I don't want to say pretentious is the word, because I'm enjoying the game, I'm enjoying what this is, especially for me after a very long, difficult day at work, coming home and experiencing Proteus, because I'm not really playing it, is something I welcome quite greatly. But let's get into it, we'll talk about it as I play, and you'll see. So you just gotta click. And it's going to say it's creating, and I believe every time it creates a, uh, a unique world for the player to explore. Um, when I The first time I played, there was some, some cool stuff to do. And one of the cool things, like I said, about the game is that the music changes depending on where you are in the world. And, and by that, I mean, you know, frogs leap, and when they leap, they make musical notes and, and so on and so forth. So we wake up, and there's an island in front of us, and we are in an ocean. And we are to merely walk. Now, there is no music yet that starts when we get... And this might not be randomly generated, as I think this is very similar to last time. But when the music starts, you're going to see what I mean by this is more of an experience rather than a game. Again, there's no end goal, no end objective, so to speak. So here we go. We're going to be jumping up here. And uh, once the music begins, you'll hear. And I I'll probably limit my commentary unless I have something very important to say, just so you can hear. And understand, this is meant to be more of an experience than anything else. This may be randomly generated. No, no. So these things, I'm all making those noises. And they will disappear when you get close. It's all about checking out your surroundings and un... Oop, they pop up over here. Interesting. They moved. What? What was that? It's all about exploring. Are those chickens? Chickens! And see, it's just the music, you know, everything is musical. Everything is musical in this game, and it's about enjoying your surroundings and relaxing and just exploring the island that's given to you. Now, don't get me wrong, I like that a lot. I'm having a real good time with it. It's, it's actually quite, quite beautiful, and it's insanely relaxing. And the music is, is, is so good, so, so, so good. I really love the music that they've created. I think it's two two men have created. Um, God, it's just so welcoming, and I really like that. What the? So the closer I get to this, it's obviously making some weird music. Huh. Interesting. And there's that. Okay. So actually, this I believe this is actually randomly generated because this is definitely not the same layout the first time around that I had. Though I'll bet it may be just slightly gener randomly generated. So that's a graveyard down there, as far as I can tell, which is interesting. Which means, to me, people used to live here. Or something. Now, last time there was, at least over here... Ah, oh, there they are. There was some totems of some sort, and I wanted to see if they... It seems that they are relatively close to where they used to be, but not necessarily in the same spot. Because these guys were overlooking the graveyard itself last time, and this time they are not necessarily overlooking the graveyard itself. And here we go. And this is awesome. Some weird looking uh, totems. Now, the, the graphic style, like I said, is extremely minimalistic. It's something that a lot of indie games have been doing, and I don't know if they did it on purpose or not, but uh, the idea of it being minimalistic and almost pixel art like, I kind of like and dislike at the same time. I say like and dislike because a lot of indie games, like I said, have been kind of falling back, and the game is beautiful, don't get me wrong. Um, and it probably serves the purpose that the, the gentlemen who created this game were going for, but I feel like I'm just tired of seeing pixelated graphics unless there's something extremely unique about it. I feel like a game like this might do well to have, I don't know, like maybe something slightly more detailed, a bit more intricate, because I would love to see what this looks like, which I assume is some sort of tower. 
our broken down art piece, but I would love to see the details on it. I want to see detailed, like what what carvings are on it, what what is the, where they're writing on it. Was it is it actually what I think it is? Am I wrong? Like I want to see all of that because part of exploring, in, in my opinion, immersing yourself in a world like this, is learning the history through visual uh, through visual sights, seeing everything there is and piecing together what either happened or how long it's been since people lived here. What is this, a frog? Oh, these are... Oh. And there you should... Oh, that's cute. That's awesome. Very cool. Now, I believe there's a day-night cycle as well. This is a tree stump. That's a big-ass tree. It's the world tree. It's where the uh, wonderful people live. And there's a day-night cycle. Like I said, you can see the sun moving right now. So, again, this is really all there is to gameplay, and this is why I have a hard time classifying this as a particularly a game. Because, what a... Okay, that made noise. Let me see if this one made noise. No. So, what am I doing that's, you know, what's my objective outside of to explore it? There's not. It's more of an interactive experience. It's more of a playable song than anything. It's almost like just loading up a song and being able to wander around. If every song... Uh, Put it this way, if every song inside each song, there was a world contained within it. That would be what this world is. You're kind of exploring the world of song. It's really weird to say that, and I, kind of the interpretation I get, and again, everybody's going to have a different interpretation altogether, but that's kind of the interpretation I'm getting when playing this game. And it's interesting. Uh, it's Again, I'm enjoying it, and I think I see myself probably for a while... What? Okay. For a while, playing this game every day after I get out of work for about a half hour to an hour, just to relax and unwind and enjoy myself because it's just one of those games that in the particular profession I'm in, you know, the restaurant industry and being a waiter and basically serving everybody's needs every day, day to day and just stressing out over it, I feel like I could, could come home and enjoy disappearing into the world that is Proteus. Do I wish that there was gameplay elements? I don't know. I think it's hard to, explain, to, to say yes or no because I feel like the game itself isn't meant to be that. Maybe if there was little things that could read along the way, more along the lines of something like, uh, what was that game called? The one I mentioned earlier. Uh, not Anna. Oh, that was wrong, by the way. Anna's not the one I'm talking about. There's a different one. Dear Esther. That's the one I was talking about. If there was maybe things to lead, read, and learn along the way, I'd be a bit more intrigued, though Dear Esther isn't still, in my opinion, not a game, so to speak, in the normal definition. It's more of an art experiment, and I think that's what this is. It's more of an artistic experiment by these two gentlemen. And it's interesting, and it's a cool one. It's really cool. Uh, you may hear some, like, kind of hesitation in my voice when I'm talking about it, because it's, it's difficult, because I'm saying I really enjoy the game. I really do like it a lot. But would I... Be feel comfortable recommending this game, okay, at ten dollars a pop, and I think I'd have to unfortunately say no. I don't think this game. Run at me, birds! Rah! I don't think this is a ten dollar game. Looks like there's wind going on now. I wish I could feel the breeze. One of those 4D games. Some lightning bugs. Where are they going? Awesome, don't know. They make it. They have some awesome music that goes with them. Oh, I love it. But uh, I have a very difficult time recommending this game for ten dollars. If it was a five dollar thing, I could probably say a hundred percent without question that this would this would be a uh, a recommend for me, a must buy. Anybody who enjoys indie games, even indie experiments, definitely drop the drop the five bucks for it. But since it's not five dollars. And all you seem to do is just wander around and enjoy the world. It's trippy, don't get me wrong. It's extremely trippy, but uh, I just don't see myself recommending this game for, for 10 bucks. And that's an unfortunate thing because there's obviously a lot of love and a lot of work put into this game. And I, I don't... I just... I want to recommend it. I do. Just to experience it. Even if you only play it for 10 to 15 minutes. Just to experience the game itself. Um, just to experience what these guys have put together. Is this and this island seems to be relatively small. Um, just to experience everything that's kind of been put together. But I can't say, with you know, for me, to, to, I can't say ten dollars is something I would spend on this. I can't. I, I I would say hold off. There's there's other things you could buy much much more interactive and a lot more fun for ten bucks. There's a lot of lightning bugs over there. I'm gonna go over there and see what's going on. Um, 
I just wish there was more to it for $10. Ooh, it's going to rain now. So there's some rain going on. And are these guys all in the graveyard? They are. Interesting. And the rain is coming. So they all go to the graveyard, it looks like. Oh, that's awesome! Whoa! Okay, alright, alright. What? Alright. Okay, well, let's just... I have never seen this before. Ooh, this is interesting. And what happened? What? Am I somewhere completely different now? Or am I in the same graveyard? I think I might still be in the same graveyard. Hmm. New music, though. And again, awesome. I do enjoy the music. I love it. What is this? All this stuff. I feel like it started to rain and I missed the rain, which actually I'm a little sad about because I, as a human being, enjoy rainy days. Uh, just the sound of the rain hitting the roof and the windows is extremely relaxing and therapeutic, and I love it. Whoa, whoa, what are those things, birds? So the island seems to change as time goes on, which is excellent. Again, I would wholly recommend this game for five bucks. Ten bucks is iffy for me. It's very difficult for me to say yes. I mean, if this is something you guys are like, I must play this game, I don't care what you say, Mathis, go. Because this is definitely not going to be for everybody, that's for sure. It is definitely not going to be for everybody. What is dragonflies? Whoa! Whoa! What a jump! Interesting. Are those flies? Whoa. Whoa! I'm moving really fast. Ah! I think I'm running. I think they're like bees. I'm sorry. Oh. Alright. So I was running from them. I don't know if this is frog or bunnies. It literally is built around just a player exploring and interacting with the world. Which I can wholly appreciate. You can tell, I, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm, I'm extremely torn about this game. It's so difficult for me to, to understand if $10 is worth it. This game is fun. It's fun. It's unique. And again, it's extremely relaxing, and I am definitely enjoying my time with it. I just feel like the asking price might be a little on the high end. But it's it's awesome. What I'm, in, I'm enjoying of it is, is what I'm playing of it, I'm enjoying... Okay, if I circle it, let's circle it a bunch. Okay, so if I just circle it, it makes noise. I guess so. And that's it. Nothing else. All right, so it just makes noise. I guess a lot of the the draw is just to to see what kind of musical notes you can get out of the island. What kind of fun things can you get out of it? There's some more, what I assume are bees. Run, birdies! I'm gonna get you. What is this? What are these things? They must be crabs. What I assume are crabs. Interesting. Alrighty. Bizarre, for sure. Ah, blinding myself. Well, the more you stare at it, the more noise it makes, which is kind of neat. Interesting. Let's go bug the bees some more. I feel like the more I'm playing, the more interesting things I'm discovering. Which is cool. But again, with no objective. Nothing to do outside of just explore the island. It's, it's, it's... The game is enjoyable. I'm going to put it that way. I'm just going to leave it at... I might not recommend it at $10, but I could see people paying $10 for it and enjoying the hell out of this. Especially for those who just enjoy music. Enjoying music and, and toying with the idea of music adapting to the player. And then they themselves just kind of almost directing the music just by being in the world. Which is exactly what's happening. Um... Absolutely excellent. So we'll wait till the last day cycle kind of ends up, and we'll see what ends up happening if on the third day or at night, or if anything interesting could potentially happen. We'll just look around a little bit more. I feel like whoa, nice. 
Whoa, whoa, hey, whoa. We discovered something new. A house. And we're really fast. Whoa. Can we walk in? No. Interesting. So there's a house here. So people did used to live here, at least that's my understanding of it. People used to live here, at the very least. But what happened to them? Where'd they go? Why'd they die? I just it's questions that I would love to, to have answered, because I'm just a curious person, and I just like to know these things. But we'll see what ends up happening during the nighttime. I'm very curious to see what, uh, what, what the third day might bring, if anything new. I'm assuming it will. Assuming there's going to be quite a few things that uh, kind of just enjoy and explore throughout the days. Yikes! I think that'd be something that'll uh, that'll that'll definitely keep me coming back. Is just to see what the different days and nights bring. All right, here comes the nighttime music. So keep your eyes out for interesting things. So there's a hut there. That definitely wasn't there before. I'm curious if like different buildings will pop up in time over time. So we'll see. Here comes the night with all its beautiful stars. And now we have to look for things. There they are. Follow them. It's almost like they want us to follow them. They're over here. Is that a bats? That's awesome. Definitely bats. Very cool. Let's see if we can follow these guys again. Uh -huh, awesome. Rain stick noises. Awesome. Something you don't hear nearly enough. There they are again. So we'll see what this is going to bring. I should probably spend, at some point, uh, a whole night within this uh, game. Here we go. So they just speed it up. Is that what's happening? They're just speeding it to the next day? I think that's exactly what's happening. So if you don't want to spend the night to explore the same stuff again, you can just go straight to the next day. Ooh, and the seasons change. And the music, of course, will change with said seasons. Pretty interesting. And enjoyable. Again, I am enjoying it. Ooh, creepy. So I find myself being hypnotized. Are these, uh, are these the dragonflies that are dying now because it's autumn? Yeah, it looks like it. That's kind of sad, I guess. That's sad. Very foggy out now, and here comes rain. We'll head over to the rain a little bit and see what uh, kind of music the rain brings. Wow, the clouds are really, really, really low. So I apologize if my commentary is uh, kind of stop and go. The reason for that is I want you guys to hear the music, and on top of it, I'm trying to uh, interpret what, I, what I'm kind of seeing into commentary, but I really want you guys to hear and experience what I am. Can we go above the clouds? Let's try it. I think we can. Whoop, yep, we can. Come up here with these totems. Enjoy the winter sights. Again, very, very beautiful. Extremely engrossing. Very, very imaginative. It sounds phenomenal. And the purchase of price point, I'm going to leave up to you guys. I mean, I can understand maybe dropping 10 on it. It's, uh, it's definitely not for everybody, but it is definitely an amazing, cool little experiment that these guys put together. It's still not, in my opinion, a game but it is still very, very awesome, and I'm enjoying it. So thank you guys so much for stopping by this indie snapshot. I know I enjoyed it, and I appreciate all of your support as I tend to. And I'll see you next time here on my channel. See you later.